This is my first melon harvested this year. And this is an Ambrosia F4, the seed and that are going to be the fifth generation. And I am going to save it because I hand pollinated it. And uh, oh man, it smells so good. Did you see that color? You see that yellow color? When you see that and it comes off the slips is what it's called. When it comes off the vine real easy, I mean you just push it a little bit and it just pops off. That's how you know it's perfectly ready and it smells so wonderful. Let me take you out to the garden and show you what the melon patch looks like and then I will take this and we're going to weigh it. All that's important for breeding. What you can see here is an expanse of butters on the right side here and melons on the left side here all along up and down this way. Several different kinds. The butternuts are across three different types of uh, butternuts and I'm going to make a selection to carry on. But this video is about melons, and I've got several different types of melons, including one that I'm growing myself. Let me take you on a little tour. All right, this side is the far end of the garden. There's the door down there, so-called door, gate, whatever you want to call it. And this is what the ambrosia melons look like. Uh, it's not really ambrosia melons anymore, because I started with... The ambrosia melon several years ago I grew it and I thought it was the most phenomenal melon I've ever tasted in my life so it's a f1 it's a hybrid they used to make that and you know I was just starting in tomatoes and squash and stuff so I was like oh, I'm just going to uh, grow out the hybrid and we'll see what kind of melons we get and I started making selections every year and one of the things I wanted was a bigger melon and I knew that I would never get that absolute outstanding taste from an ambrosia, but I was hoping I could get something pretty good. So that's what I've been doing. I've been saving seed from it. And this is what it looks like um, when it's uh, large and getting close. This one is starting to get some uh, color to it, some yellowing, and it won't be long. That one will be ready. In fact, the, the one I picked was it just I just saw it out of the blue I mean I, I never noticed it was even changing colors but I've got several melons in here lots of melons you can see two there one there one there two over here one here starting to show signs of changing uh, one over there one over there there's just lots of melons and productivity is definitely key when it comes to things that I want to continue so that's what we selected for. That is the story of the ambrosia. Let's go down and take a look at some of the other melons down here. So this is a curious melon. I don't know what this is. It's shaped funny. As you can see here, there's another one over here. It's shaped kind of odd. It's fatter at the point where it connects. It's, it's really shaped odd. Uh, and it is a melon. Uh, you can tell by the um, leaves. That's a melon, it's not a squash. Here's another one over here. That, that one's shaped funny. Now this is supposed to be a Bidwell melon. And it looks nothing like a Bidwell melon. So I'm curious to see what this turns out to be. You'll notice all this yellow in here. Here and over there, there's three. There's, well, let's see if there's another one over in through here. There's one over there. So I've got about four or five. This is a melon that Uncle Don gave me. He said he got it from uh, Guatemala. Um, I don't know what that means. Um, to me it looks like a canary melon or an offshoot of some sort of canary melon. Uh, not sure what it's going to taste like but this is the one that's going to be chosen. I, I hand pollinated that one and this is the one that I'm going to save seed from because it's bigger than the others and um, it's um, when I know I hand pollinated so that's perfect that ended up working out good he swears it tastes like heaven so we'll see I even got some little ones that looks like back over there they're still trying to grow this melon here is called a torpeda t-o-r-p-e-d-a which is a I'm not sure what language but it basically means torpedo and that's the reason it's what it's shaped like I just now see there's some cracking on that one over there now I've looked it up online. It's a Russian melon, by the way, and it's the Russians' favorite melon. And you can tell it's starting to change color a little bit. But these uh, lines here in it, they will turn, um, so 
supposedly they will get less clear, I guess is the best way to say it. And, it, and it'll get a duller appearance. I'll also be looking for vine slip here and some cracking like over there is a, kind of an indication. Another thing you can do with the melon is you can feel the blossom end or the opposite end where it's attached from to the stem, the opposite end, and kind of push in just gently. And if it gives some, you know it's getting close as well. It looks like one's trying to grow over there too. This is another kind of melon. I believe this one is the Bidwell. Um, it's an old heirloom that um, an officer Bidwell from a long time ago. I'll, I'll put it in a video. Uh, but I got this from Baker Creek Seas and you can also look it up there. But I've only got two of these and this is an unusual type melon. And it's changing color so it won't be too much longer uh, for that one as well. I've got, uh, looks like only two. I don't see any others in the patch here. And my last melon that's producing is the, the crane melon. And crane melons are infamous in California. They've been growing them there since the 20s. A guy named something something or another crane uh, developed this melon from crossing several different types of melon. And you can tell that these are, uh, this one over here especially, starting to get ready because those colors will fade some and I really like that one over there the really big one I tend to like bigger ones when it comes to melons I just don't want to get something real tiny and not have much you know it's it's like a tease <laughs> you get a couple bites and go wow and then it's gone <laughs> so I'm gonna save seeds from the bigger ones and carry those forward but the crane melon is is a California legend and used to you can only get these things by going to the crane barn and I'm not sure if it's Sacramento, California, but anyway, C-R-A-N-E, Google it. Lots and lots of information on the crane melon. Here in Arkansas, they seem to do okay. I've got some dying out going on here, but it seems to be kind of picking up again over here. We'll see if they continue to produce, but right now I've got four. So that's it for the melons in the patch. Let's go weigh that one and see what it weighs. This melon here, you can see it in my hand for size reference. It's not huge, but it's pretty darn good size. This is as big as any cantaloupe you can buy in the market, or most of the ones I bought in the market anyway. And it is heavy. I'm going to say it weighs a minimum of four pounds, probably close to four pounds. All right, we've got the melon in the bag here. I've got it zero out, and I'm going to lift it up, and we're going to see what we got. Four and three quarters pounds, 4.72. That's a little bigger than I expected, actually. Uh, but I knew it was right around four pounds. That's a good deal. I like that. And it smells so, so good. Oh, man, I can't wait to get into it. And there it is. This thing is good. Anyway, that's it, you guys. See you later. Well, that wraps up this video. If you guys enjoyed the video, please comment, like, and subscribe. In order to subscribe, all you got to do is click the button here. We'll put a check mark next to it. If you want to get notification the next time I make a video, click on the bell here. Check here and hit save. You guys take care.